Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's talk about multi multiplying vectors. And there's three different kinds of multiplications we should look at. First of all, we have multiplication with a scalar. We have what we call the dot product, also known as the scalar product. And we have the cross product, also known as the vector product. So let's first take a look at multiplying by a scalar. Let's say that a, small a here, represents a scalar, and we're multiplying times the sum of two vectors. Notice that a multiplied times a plus b, a and b being the vectors, we can simply write it as a times the vector a plus a times the vector b. In other words, we can use the distributive property. Multiplying by a scalar is very simple. If the scalar is 3, that means we simply multiply the length of a and the length of b by the number 3. Simple enough. Dot product and cross products are a little bit different. But notice that the dot product is also called a scalar product. And the reason for that is that when you do a dot product between two vectors, the result is a scalar. So the end result is that you don't end up with a vector at all, you simply end up with a single number called a scalar. As opposed to doing a cross product, the result of a cross product is another vector, and that's why they call it a vector product. So the big difference between the two is that in the one case, you end up with just simply a number, a scalar, and with a cross product, you end up with a vector. Now, visually, representing a dot product is this. Let's say we have the vector A, which has a magnitude of 5, which makes an angle of 60 degrees with the vector B, which has a magnitude of 10. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do what we call a dot product. To understand what a dot product is, let's say we project the vector A onto the vector B. So in other words, we take the vector A times the cosine of the angle and we get this projection of A onto B. We get the length of A projected onto B and that's called A cosine theta. If we now multiply that length times the length of B, that is equal to the dot product. So essentially, if we write a dot b, that's why we call it the dot product, to put a dot in between, a dot b is the projection of a onto b times the length of b, and therefore we can write it as the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the cosine of the angle between them. But essentially, it's the length of the vector a projected onto b times the length of b. And so, for example, if we take the length of a projected onto b, since we have an angle of 60 degrees, 5 times the cosine of 60 is the same as 5 times 1 half or 2 and a half. So the length of A projected onto B is 2 and a half in this case. We multiply that times the length of B which is 10. 2 and a half times 10 is 25. And that's then the scalar result of that dot product. And that's what physically a dot product represents. Notice we can also find the dot product by simply multiplying the x, x components together, multiplying the y components together, and multiplying the z components together of the two vectors, and then add those products together. We do take care of the sign. For example, if a sub x is pointing in the negative direction, we want that to be a negative quantity. So we do have to look at signs, and we'll see some examples of that later. But that's what we mean by dot products. A couple more rules is that if the angle between them is zero, then a dot b is simply the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b. Because if a is pointing the same direction as b, we simply take the length of a, the length of b, and multiply them together. But if the angle between them is 90 degrees, then a dot b is equal to zero, because then the projection of a onto b is zero, and therefore you don't have any dot product. It's simply equal to zero. That property is actually a very useful one, which will be used later as we use the concept of the dot product on some real problems. Now let's take a look at the cross product. Notice that we have two vectors, a and b, and those two vectors, they form a plane. Now if we do a cross product with a and b, we get a third vector. That third vector will be perpendicular to both the vector a and to the vector b. And by doing so, vector c, if we call that, if we call a cross b, vector c, then c will be perpendicular by the plane made by vectors a and b. Now the magnitude of the cross product, or the vector product, is simply equal to the area formed by this parallelogram. So if we draw a line parallel to b starting from, from the tip of a, and we draw a line parallel to a starting from the tip of b, where they meet right here, we end up with a parallelogram, and the magnitude of the cross product equals the magnitude of that area the size of that area. Another way of thinking about the size of the area, if the angle between the two vectors is theta, 
then the magnitude of this area or the magnitude of the cross product is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of the angle between them. Notice, of course, if the angle between them is zero, then there is no area, and of course, then the cross product is equal to zero. We can also use the right-hand rule to get the direction of the resultant vector. If I point my fingers in the direction of A, that's the vector comes first, and I curl my, my fingers into the direction of B like this, then my thumb will point in the direction of C. If I then want to take the other cross product, B cross A, or the vector product, B uh, times A, and I point my fingers in the direction of B, curl my fingers in the direction of A, and now my thumb points in the opposite direction. So you can see that A cross B is the negative of B cross A. This is A cross B pointing up, and B cross A is pointing down. The magnitude of that vector will be the same, simply the direction will be different. If we want to calculate the cross product or the vector product, we can do it using the matrix like this. A cross B is simply i, j, k, or x, y, z unit vectors in the first row, the x, y, and z components of the first vector, and the x, y, z components of the second vector. And then, of course, this will equal the c vector, the cross product, which is a vector quantity. To do that, we take the first cell right here, i, and then we multiply that times a, y, times b, z, minus a, z, times b, y. So we have a, y, b, z, minus a, z, b, y. Then we take the negative of this, negative j, and then we multiply ax times bz and az times bx. Notice that we essentially cross out this column right here. We simply multiply what's left, ax times bz minus az times bx. That's what comes here. And then we take the third one right here, k, we get plus k, and if we get rid of that column right here, we have these four cells left. It's ax times by minus ay times bx, and that goes over here. Notice that this magnitude times the i unit vector, this magnitude times the negative j unit vector, and this magnitude times the positive k unit vector, or x, y, and z unit vectors, that gives us then the, the x, y, and z component of the cross product, which is equal to the vector c. And that's how we physically do a cross product or vector product when we know the components of the two vectors. If we simply want to know the magnitude, we can do it like this. If we want to know the direction, we use the right-hand rule. And that's the difference between the three different kinds of products we can have when we're dealing with vectors. And that is how it's done.